Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. I sit in a place that is known. That is to say, known is that those who are here are known. I have known them forever. Forever is a circle. A beautiful ring without a beginning or an end that represents the creative energy of the universe. And the pieces of those creative parts are partially here. And this is what I wish to speak of in these few moments together. Sometimes there are channels which have a great deal to impart. I've got some specifics to give you, but they are known by my partner, even some of them in his series of lectures. But some of you need to hear it from me. Oh, dear one, there is purpose in your life. And some of the struggles that are here, the ones that are listening and reading in this room before me corporally, it's about shift. And the frustrations that you may have this day, the misunderstandings that you may leave with this day because you didn't necessarily grab on to the, the perception of a multi-dimensional part and being, all of these things won't matter. Because what is coming is an increased awareness of a part and a piece of the human being that we rarely speak of. We've talked about the grids changing. We've talked about the recalibration of knowledge, and self, and We don't often talk about what is really truly going to change that is a core issue in the human. You make assumptions as we move forward that your reality does not move forward, that you've got to accomplish all of the things that we discuss in an energy that you have been in. And we tell you this is not the case. You are turning a corner. This corner is a slow turn, but it's a corner. Dear one, you're already starting to see young people born that are different than you. And if you could measure their DNA chemically, you would see the same set of chemicals you've always seen. So something else is changing, and I will tell you. It's in the DNA, but it's not seeable, for it is quantum. It is multidimensional. The very imprints of the DNA efficiency level are increasing, and that creates a human being who thinks differently. A precursor to human beings who will be born with an instinct that will not create war. That's just the partial of it. I want to tell you what is really truly potentially going on. With free choice, you have agreed to turn this corner and we are seeing you do it. It's been too long without a war, a really big one, you might say. Oh, there might be, there may be small ones to come. You can, you can count on it. But the one that everybody expects is not going to happen. The doom and gloom that you've been told about economies falling over, 
about all of these things that potentially are in your face. Don't be shocked and surprised when some of the wild cards appear and things get better. It's interesting, isn't it, what happens when things get better? Nobody talks about it. <laughs> but if they get worse, everybody talks about it. Now that is a human nature attribute that will also change. Now this is not new news. This one is a summary and then I'll get on to the new. And the summary states that the human nature is going to be more attracted to light than dark. Get ready for it. A whole shift in what you want to watch in your entertainment. What you'll respond to. What those who will sell you things you call commercials will create for your interest. How politics might start to move. Come a day when you come back and you watch the commercials today that you have for politics and you will cringe. <laughs> because they're drama driven, fear driven, even hate driven. Can human nature change that much? We told you you are in the process of this. Now what we're going to tell you is that in the process of a recalibrating human being is attitudinal change. But more than that, you're going to have to change communication with spirit. And so we start to tell you what is going on that is under the hood between you and I. Old souls are going to see it first. Old souls are going to start to experience things. The communication with the Akash is going to be fearful for some. For you're going to start dreaming very real dreams of who you've been. The Akash comes to the surface as the multidimensionality of a human being becomes more active. What we are telling you is that your past lives experience start to meld with your current life in ways that you have to understand so that they don't frighten you. That's one. And so the admonition is do not be concerned or frightened if you start to hear and see and feel who you've been in a very real way. This is communication. You with your higher self. For the higher self is the one who has been there for every past life. The Akashic record in your DNA heats up you might say and the soup starts to boil. And the vapor that it creates, this is metaphoric, spills over into 3D and you feel things and you wonder about the appropriateness of things. Expect it. Old soul, this is for you. I'm talking to you. Number two, you're going to start having a more succinct relationship with the subconscious. That is to say the intelligent part of your body which we have called innate is going to start contacting you in a better way. Don't be shocked if you don't have to do kinesiology ever again, old soul. If your intuition starts talking to you about what your body needs and it never did before. This is all part of what you are creating in a DNA that works better than it did the last generation. The children of today are having an attribute that you did not. They're thinking more conceptually and that is going to create systems you never thought of. These will be systems you're going to need that you never had before because they're going to be able to put together unequally yoked entities. I will leave it at that. But just to say you're going to need this dear ones for peace on the planet. <laughs> putting together unequally yoked entities. Call it countries or consciousness or culture or religion. You can make it up if you want to. I'm just telling you there are systems that are going to work 
and you've never thought of them. That is a conceptual mind at work, not a linear mind. That's just one item. You're already seeing that in the kids. Grandparents, isn't it interesting how your grandchildren are trying to put together things for your children? <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. They're trying to solve the family problems and they see things that their parents don't. They see it clearly and their parents don't because they're conceptual. They can see through falsehood because they're conceptual. They're not led down a linear path where they make a left or a right choice. They see it all at once. Your innate is going to start talking to you clearly. If you're listening to something which we have always called your intuitive mind. Now intuition has an attribute that most human beings don't like and that is to say it seems to be fleeting. It comes in a flash and it goes away. It does not linger. It does not explain itself. And the human being is used to something that comes and sticks around, proves itself, honors itself, explains itself. And then you go, okay, I'll listen. But intuition does not do that. You get an intuitive flash, a thought for a moment, and you tend to discount it. Now your innate is going to start giving you information about your own body in flashes that only you will understand. For it is specifically unique to every single human's path. I cannot give you a generic answer to anything but your intuition will. And this is going to start happening automatically without you asking and that may be irritable. <laughs> Imagine being awakened in the middle of the night by your intuition. And then asking, what was that? As you try to go back to sleep. Expect more of it. You're going to have to start honoring that flash and learning to decipher what it says. In a quantum state, you do not have the linearity of something that comes and presents itself in a way that you like for so many seconds so you can analyze it. Instead it's going to be presented in such a short amount of time you'll wonder if it was even there. Intuition. It's a thought group that presents itself to you that is an instruction set for you that gives you what's ahead if you listen. For what is ahead is based upon potentials that are known not future telling, not a psychic ability, but an analysis that is quantum. That's what you're going to start getting. You'll know what is around the corner before you get there because your intuition already knows it. Because in a quantum world that knowledge is set and known as the strongest potential that will occur. In a three-dimensional world, it is a total and complete mystery. So communication is going to start increasing between that which is the quantum self and the linear self. You're not going to like it. Not all of you are going to like it because it's going to present itself in times when you didn't ask for it and it's not going to be there when you do. <laughs> now why would such a thing be? You're going to have to get used to this dear ones that the quantum parts of you do not have a clock. They do not respond to timing as you want it to be responded to. So how do you work with this new attribute that's going to start occurring? And what will it feel like? The instructions are these. Understand it's coming. That there will be something that would appear to be unbalancing that your brain is going to do for you in a new way that you're not used to. A new kind of communication with your subconscious. 
here's what you need here's what you should do don't trust that person don't go over here turn left turn right it's always what you wanted believe me it's always what you ask for but you're going to have to learn to read it the children of tomorrow are going to come in knowing how to read it and that brings up a subject which is probably the most difficult to ever have try to explain to humanity and that is how the communication of self works there's something you have called synchronicity it is the trust that when you put out intent spirit hears you and that somehow magically there will be those you will meet in the future who will have answers to questions that you have today. The things will be magically moved around and put together in ways that you have asked for or not asked for but which were better than you asked for. And you'll have no idea how it's going to happen. And you trust it and you should for this is the new communication. This is the way of it. It won't make sense in linearity. It never does. How can you know what you don't know until you know it? But you can trust you'll know it, do you see? You can have the energy of co-creation on things that you do not know are coming, but you can trust in the fact that they will come, even without knowing what they are. Now I want to give you some information that my partner has taught in the past and I want to make it very clear. And many of you will not like this because it is not what you were told in basic metaphysics. It starts to explain that which is around you you call guides and angels. And I'm going to give you some information. You can call them whatever you want but they're not what you think. I'm now going to explain the engine of synchronicity. I'm going to do it quickly so that you can review it slowly. <laughs> and here is the truth. When you stand on the other side of the veil with me in the wind of birth, you are a piece of God. You have a light that cannot be understood a multi-dimensionality that's playing that shines like the sun the brightest light you've ever seen in 3D is what you look like beautiful with your name ringing in light with colors you can't imagine vibrations that don't exist on the planet that's who you are And then you come into the planet and you're not. Now I'm going to use some 3D logic with you to try to explain something that is unexplainable. What happened when you got here? <laughs> Where's the rest of you? It's true you have the Merkaba named by Elisha when he saw Elijah's ascension. Elijah turned into the piece of God he was and blinded Elisha with the light. That's who you are. The bottom line is you're not all here. What happens when you come into this planet, dear one, is that you split. Only part of you comes down. There is what we would call the tether. A multi-dimensional cord perhaps that is silver if you want to imagine it that is the portal that connects your higher self in your body to the rest of you on the other side of the veil not in the sky dear ones the other side of the veil 
So you are in communication at some level with that which you left on my side. I want my partner to explain this better. When you come into the planet, dear ones, only a part of you comes and the rest stays with me. Not with me, but part of me, because I am also part of the soup of the creative energy you call God. We're not isolated into boxes as you see in three dimension. We're part of the creative soup of all that is. You call me cryon. You want to put a face, skin and wings perhaps, give me even a color. Oh, how 3D of you. I speak for the group, the family that you belong to. And I would like to tell you that I sit in a place on the other side of the veil with you. Because a lot of you is here. You had to leave it behind. Here with me. The corporeal you is only a part. Now you would understand this if you were to take on the full complement of your creation. You would vanish. You know that. So what I'm telling you is you're in two places at once. But now it gets bizarre. <laughs> Part of you comes in with you into this planet and splits out to become multidimensional and follow you around. These are called guides and they are you. And you are loving them. You love, you're in love with your guides. Now you know why. They're you. You give them names perhaps. You even, you even change them. Do you know what the guide change is all about that I told you about 22 years ago? Do you know what the guide change is really about? That's a refreshing of you. <laughs> it's so different. When you go through this refreshing process, it's almost like, in your terms, you rebooted your computer and you got new parts. So refreshing is it that your guides look different. They're not. They're still you. But they're vibrating at a higher level. And so are you. I'm giving you the mechanics of what I'm about to call the synchronistic engine. And I'm not even there yet. So here you sit, human being, the corporeal you, Part of you is on the other side of the veil. Part of you is in your body, the part that you see in the mirror. You've got the higher self, which is the multidimensional soul part. And you've got the guides, which are the other part of you that split out when you came. That's quite a family of you. And that is the multidimensionality of the soul. It's in many places at the same time. Just like God. Now, what are we going to do with this next? I will tell you. Now you start to become multidimensional and you put together something we will call intent with an energy. That's an energy of confluence. Intent is an energy of confluence. That means it goes someplace, melds with something, and has action. It's just not a thought that you throw into the clouds. If you didn't know that. <laughs> It goes somewhere and does something. And here comes your intent. And the intent goes like this. Dear Spirit, I wish to have the solution to the problem in front of me and the ones to follow that I don't even know about in ways I cannot conceive. And I trust Spirit for this. Blessed is the human who has the courage to do that. Hmm? Instead of saying, Dear Spirit, here's what I need. I need you to do this and that. That boss that I have, get rid of him. <laughs> I need to have more money. I need to pay this. I need to do this. Oh, how 3D. Spirit may have something a whole lot better than that. Dear Spirit, I trust in synchronicity. I am going to have things come at me because I'm going to get out there and check. Go to meetings. Go to places. Listen to my intuition, which is new and is going to help me and work with me. Pay attention to my dreams. 
so that I will be in the right place at the right time to have those meet me who I don't know yet. Now that is a light worker. And I am just told, I am just going to tell you how this works. So get ready. The intent goes out, the confluence of energy is seen, the meld is created. And the pieces and the parts of you that are on my side of the veil meet with the pieces and the parts of other human beings, all of whom are there with us. You do understand, do you not, light worker, that every single human being on the planet has part of them on my side of the veil, just like you do. It doesn't matter if they're enlightened or not. If they're old souls or not, they still have part of it with us. And if you get my gist, they're on my side of the veil where all is known. Therefore, they're in the program with you, even if they're not when they're on the earth. Did you understand that? The one who is the sand in your oyster, the one that's giving you the most problems, the one who creates the energy which you feel is dark, has a piece and part of them on my side of the veil that isn't dark, and responds to the confluence of your intent, putting them in the right place at the right time to help them and you because you gave intent. I'm giving you the engine of synchronicity which actually will be peaceful on the planet and is going to bring you energies you don't expect and this may be cryptic but I am telling you that the pieces and the parts on my side of the veil is what creates synchronicity because of what you do here. The guides around you push and pull you and get you to the right place if you listen to them. That's how it works. You got a whole team of you working for you. It's not magic. It's not God pushing buttons. It's you working with the others around you. It's family working with family. So what I have just told you is that all humanity works for you. The old soul has the information, the energy to change the crystalline grid, understands about intent and is the engine for the planet. One half of one percent of the planet is going to change all the planet because what you do here with your intent, all of the souls on the planet, seven billion of them on my side of the veil, are working for you. How about that? I've just given you the answer of why things are not going to turn out the way you're told they're going to turn out. Because the 3D engine of doubt and fear and drama is not going to survive. Not when the old souls give intent. That's new. <laughs> this is the information we're starting to expand on. Many won't understand what I just said. You're going to have to listen to it again. You're going to have to visualize it. And when you do listen to it again, and when it's taught again, shut your eyes and let us give you the picture of what it's like for you to have the tools at your command to create synchronicity that will then create peace on earth. It's not working in 3D. It's not what you think. None of the rules apply that you thought should apply. You are now becoming far more multidimensional where there is no time, there is no distance. And things are going to work in a way that will shock you shock you in their purity, in their goodness. And you will look back someday on these days and realize that this is the renaissance of humanity. Meanwhile, it's not going to happen immediately. Meanwhile, you're here to work. Meanwhile, slow, uncomfortable change. And that is why they call it work. But I just gave you where it's going. I want you to hear this because you're going to be part of it now and later. I bring you these things because these are the highest potentials of the planet at the moment. Struggle, drama, old energy that doesn't want to die, leaders who will hold their ground even in death coming soon, shocks, 
of where certain countries will go with their new leadership that no one thought they would go to. The wild cards are starting to occur and it won't be anything that you ever saw in old prophecy. Congratulations, dear one. You stand on the precipice of something that you could only, only have dreamed about. And if you don't see it right away, you will. We have no clock. I can't tell you when. Free choice may beat it up for a while, but the potential is so strong, you're going to want to create it. And if you don't, your children will. <laughs> and if they don't, their children will. And this is why we celebrate you and wash your feet. And now you know. We have said now for years that this change was coming. The prophecies have been clear in their own vague way that the consciousness of the planet itself was going to shift. That the planet would become softer. And the things unexpected would happen. We even told you there's a wild card coming. And that you're going to get more of them. And they may feature things, inventions you didn't expect, actions you didn't expect, benevolence you didn't expect. Softer energy is coming to you. And that is very sweet. And many have said, this is a good prediction, a wonderful prophecy. I want to tell you what's really happening. I want to give you the ABCs of it, as you say. I want to give you the physicalness and the reality of what's going on. Some of this will appear to you as a review, but it isn't. It's a consolidation of many little pieces that I've given you before to show you what is going on today. The subject is DNA. DNA is not simply a chemical molecule in your body. It is a multi-dimensional piece of divinity. The very molecule that you call DNA is all over the galaxy, dear ones. It is life. It is the way life forms. It is the, it is the patterning. It is the geometry of life everywhere. And you're going to see this. Well understood by many, not so well by some. And it's changing. It can only change through physics. You are not receiving any chemical changes from the universe. It's all through physics. I'll review 26 years ago when I came in. I told my partner to write in his first book, and he did, that the magnetic grid of the earth is shifting. And it did. It had to. Because the magnetic grid of the planet is related to, intertwined with, the physics of human consciousness. As goes the grid, goes human consciousness. And it has been approximately the same through your lifetimes. And now it moves a lot. It moved so that it could be positioned to receive something that is now receiving. Think of it as moving the furniture so that you can better view something you didn't know was viewable. <laughs> and so you're reposturing the grid for something coming to it that it's going to end up calling being called an evolutionary energy and it's physical it's really physical 
Months ago and years before that, we told you that your planet is going into a place, if you want to call it that, in space that it never has been in before. This is not esoteric. Ask an astronomer. Is the solar system coming out of a protective bubble into a new kind of radiation or energy or whatever you can call it, call it that you haven't seen before? Is it possible that your solar system is lose, losing a protective sheath that it's always had because of where it was? I want you to understand your solar system has always been on the move. It rotates around the center of the galaxy. You're always in a new period of time and space, constantly. But all of the lifetimes on this planet you have had have been in one energy, and now it changes. And now it changes. Physically, what is it doing? The new energy is affecting your sun. Because this energy is designed to do that. Dear ones, what if I told you this energy was always here waiting for you to pass the marker? This is an evolutionary energy that's going to affect your sun, the heliosphere of your sun, which then passes to the magnetic field of the earth, which has now been repostured for new consciousness. Oh, well, there are those who intellectual will say, well, what if we had destroyed ourselves? What if there was no humans to receive this? It's simple. Nothing would have happened. But the area of space was still there. And the same energies would have been there and you would not have been simple but you are and so the prophecy itself from the indigenous is being fulfilled a great deal by the new energy that are in space they affect your sun the heliosphere of your sun changes now the sun had to be quiet for this. I want you to ask an astronomer about the sun and the cycles of the sun. And I want you to ask the astronomer what period of radiance is the sun in at the moment. And the astronomer will say well it appears to be one of the quietest times the sun has ever seen. Solar flares and sunspots are disturbances in the multidimensional field that surrounds the heliosphere of the sun. We wanted it as quiet as possible and this was timed for that. The sun is quiet. It's affecting your weather. We told you that. Due to its quietness, you're, you're in a cycle of weather that we also predicted that has a lot to do with the energy that's coming. That's physical. Ask an astronomer. They're worried about it, some of them. Others are not. It is affecting you. Now you know why the magnetic grid was changed, when it was changed, and why. That's physical. Now a bit more esoteric, at the same time this is happening, we gave you the information of the nodes and the nulls. Is it possible? that the Pleiadians themselves having been there at the beginning and knowing about this change this marker the ones that actually helped with the prophecies they actually were the ones that influenced the Mayan calendar of course through intuition would know about this time the nodes and the nulls are fast track engines that are affecting the grids of the planet consciousness the grids of the planet affect consciousness crystalline remembrance magnetic consciousness that is soft or hard the Gaia grids all of them are being tempered 
fast-tracked, fed, if you want to say, by the nodes and the nulls. This is information, if you haven't heard about it before, is easy to find. I want you to look at the confluence of energies that are shifting and changing that directly affect one thing, your DNA. The DNA of the human being is ready to shift and change. You'll never see it in a microscope because it's not chemical, it's physics. The 90% of DNA that heretofore was junk and now you understand it's not has within it information that is multidimensional and is ready to receive information from the sources I just gave you. Like antennas in your body, the DNA is going to receive and shift and it's going to affect genetics mothers receive it first pass it to your children mothers you don't even know you got it and you're passing it to your kids there is what you would call perhaps an agreement in biology that it would be passed in a new way to the newborns and the newborns are the ones that would then wake up with the change and they are I'm going to talk about Genesis cells in a moment because this is important that you know what they are and it will be perhaps new information or maybe not it's a cryon term not a medical term there may be medical terms similar this is different. The baby comes into the planet and what is going on is you're in a new place in space. You have the nodes and the nulls feeding into the grid new information and the paradigm of consciousness is different for them than for you. Things start working better. Intuitive self the barrier between innate and consciousness all of these things start to improve the barrier starts to become less be ready for children that have intuition about what's wrong with them and if they tell you something's wrong take them to the doctor don't tell them it's your imagination honey <laughs> or it'll be okay later do you hear that there are those listening to this right now who need to hear that because their children are looking at them and saying this I feel funny something's wrong moms for years used to raising children are used to a paradigm in the old energy and the paradigm has a certain kind of health template it's changed the kids are waking up to being intuitive about their own health. The bridge isn't built yet to innate, but it is close and they're feeling something and innate is talking to them for the first time. You didn't get it. They do. Listen to them. The Akash of the child is starting to become clearer. These children are going to tell you so many things about who they've been and what they've done. Church, get ready for it. If you are a parent and you're listening to this now, the worst thing you can do is suppress it. The best thing you can do is to tell the child the absolute truth. The absolute truth. I believe you. There are those who won't. Let's make an agreement when you say it out loud and when you don't. That's truthful. And the child will get it. The child will get it. And it won't disturb things that you don't want disturbed. And the child will know it because it has an ally called a parent who believes it 100%. These are instructions for kids in the new age. It's going to get even stronger. 
the children they have will surprise them on how much better certain things work. Now that's a newborn child. Instinct is going to work better than it ever has. Now instinct is not something that you're used to seeing in humans. You see it in animals because the offspring of animals for survival have an instinct that is passed so well they can walk within hours of birth. You don't have that. Instinct is starting to become part of that which is Akash. It is chemical as well as being esoteric, as is in animals. You ought to have it, and you will. You're going to see children remembering how to walk and how to eat faster faster than they should have, faster than the doctors that know about child development will give you. It's off the scale. Get ready for it. It's instinct. It's simple chemistry, but it's working better. Just like in the animal kingdom, children will come in remembering what their parents know, what their parents are able to do, what a human being is able to do, walk and talk and eat properly. As it is now, every mother in the room knows you start from scratch, nothing, zero, every time a child is born. And that is changing. If you look at the individual cell and DNA itself, if you could say what is happening, it is becoming enabled. Now you're using a funny word and it's a buzzword in esoteric and it's called activation don't change it it's fine but it actually is not accurate you are releasing DNA from a prison if you have somebody who is crippled in a chair now this is going to mean something to those of you who are here not to those who are listening later because there's been an example on the screen. A cripple in a chair, shriveled, not able to move. And suddenly they are released slowly from this and the fingers untangle. The hand starts to become whole again. They start to move and wiggle because of something that's happened to the DNA not to the hand, not to the muscles, not to the, not to the fingers, not even to the arm to the DNA it's a release I want you to hold this vision released from a prison of, of, of being crippled your DNA is crippled and it's your free choice of where you wanted to take the energy of this planet and your DNA cooperated. That is what you've lived with and that's what's changing. It's not DNA activation, it's DNA release. Release. Look at that in the paradigm in your visualization. You're releasing what has been held back. And you're asking how. Do you realize the help that you have? Did you think for a moment that all of this was going to be you just doing things? It involves the galaxy, the part of space you're in, the nodes and the nulls, the creator of the universe. It involves the Pleiadians. It involves your timeline. All of this for you to sit in a new energy and release the DNA. Dear ones, I want to tell you old souls there's something you ought to know you don't have to wait for this the old soul has the equipment inside right now just like the newborn now I want you to follow this we've not talked about this in this way before your DNA is filled with information and templates. Now we are calling them templates which are patterns and paradigms of life. 
and there are templates which you have only received partially now what you don't know about a template it is it has what we would call patterning of its own if you have a portion of a template already that is to say a piece of the design it draws to itself the rest of the design if it could get it did you understand that if you have a piece of the picture that piece has an attitude <laughs> an attitude of desire and wanting the rest of the picture as soon as it's possible to get that it's like magnetics it literally flies to itself and the template snaps into place and you get the whole thing all of you have pieces of the template and all of those pieces in an old soul are ready to attach themselves literally calling the names of the rest of the template to come forward and in this new energy that is what you can do you are going to then complete the templates that are missing old soul one of the templates that never goes away is part of a manual think of it this way although it's not linear I want you to think of the manual of birth when you came in what was the manual like what page were you on when you were five days old what page were you on at six months what page were you on when you were 30 and you all know that all the pages are different because of the chronology of growing up the pages are still there the template is still there for what I call Genesis cells Genesis cells as I will define them are the cells of a newborn which accelerate growth and learning all the antennas are ten times as long as they are for you now the child absorbs the world in six months learns everything in six months speech walking all of the things its antennas are so big listening to the attitudes and the consciousness of every single parent in the room you know that it's different for a kid than it is now and then that slows down and then you have the adult Genesis cells they're still there the template is still there the instruction sets for how they're made if you want to call it that are still there by the way it's all physics now old soul these cells are available for you now just go get them in the book you do it with affirmations you do it with consciousness you do it with meditation however you communicate with innate it's ready to activate the Genesis cells and what that means to you is fast track growth to enlightenment to any situation you have whether it's healing whether it's teaching whether it's talent can you imagine right now whatever age you are ten times Genesis cells are ready for the old soul I keep saying old soul did you notice you've got to have graduated in other words a number of lifetimes gives you the template information that a newbie would not have that's been on the earth four or five times you have gotta have a hundred lifetimes maybe a thousand to develop experience to recognize what's going on every one of you in this room can say to yourself I know that I've been here before you know too much you feel too much you're in this room you wouldn't be otherwise that's been stated it's accurate and it's true you're an old soul everything I've just told you is about the enhancement of the human being in an energy that if you were alert you would have expected what does an enhanced old soul look like And the answer is compassion I close with this the secret to mining your Akash is having a compassionate consciousness does that surprise you that's what has been missing all along 
If you're going to mine your Akash, that is to be in touch with who you were and start rewriting who you are, you're going to have to come to an agreement of compassion with yourself. Lack of anger. Care for others. Purity of God inside. Now, I've never said that before. That's physics. The physics of consciousness to create compassion creates what I call compassionate action. Then you can start mining your Akash. It's for everyone in the room. An old soul knows how to do this. Those listening, I know who you are. You wouldn't be listening unless you were an old soul. Even an uninterested old soul. You are one. You know you are. Compassion is the king of all descriptions of emotion at this point on the planet. It's going to lead you into an evolved state and without compassion and caring for others, it is not going to work. In fact, nothing will work. <laughs> Very slowly, there's going to be a split and we talked to you about it before of those who are compassionate and those who are not. And it's going to be obvious obvious caring or uncaring state of mind that's the split to come don't worry about it compassionate one when you take the attributes of the master light surrounds you earlier today I said I know who's here it is a family that I speak to in the room. It is a family who listens to these channelings. And I again broach the timelessness of what we are doing. The information presented here will last a long time and there will be those hearing it right now for the first time and yet much time will have passed since it was given in your time. And it will be as new to them as it is to you. The energy will be just as fresh. And I say to you that in this timeless, this timeless attribute of the reality that I am in, I see the potentials of all listeners forever. I know who's listening. That may be difficult for you. Dear ones, I want to tell you about a process in your body. Not only mysterious to you because it is one that does not present itself in 3D. But elusive for you don't know how to get to it really. Not completely. And yet it belongs to you so well that it is you. And you might ask, how can something be inside me, Cryon, that I don't know about? And I will say yet again to you that you are not working at full capacity. And that this is the subject of this year. The recalibration of humanity includes an evolved spirit. And we're going to talk a little more about that in this channeling. But let us first identify innate. What makes innate so mysterious to you is that it is not a brain function. It is perhaps one of the only systems in the body that is not centralized. This is difficult. It has not been discovered. It is not known in medical science, but it has been seen over and over. What you have in DNA is very difficult to explain. The trillions of DNA molecules in your body are all in communication with each other all the time. 
This has to be a way of it. If you think about what DNA does, how does your body know which kind of cell it needs and where it needs it? It is innate that is responsible for that literally at birth. The DNA, you might say, is truly esoteric central control. It is the field around the trillions of pieces of DNA that knows itself as one entity. The one entity is innate. So you might say that it is the combination of the DNA cells in your body seen as one thing that is what you call smart body innate. It is decentralized. There is no one organ of the body that is responsible for innate. Every single part of the body is involved in smart body systems. You're used to finding out things through innate with muscle testing, the kinesiology, the tapping, all of the other systems that give you what we will call smart feedback. In order to find out what the smart body wants to tell you. And those who facilitate this know that they are talking to a field in the body and not an organ, not a gland, not the brain. So the first thing we want to tell you about innate is that it is body-wide. Anything that has DNA in you and it's usually that which you can can think of perhaps a, a major part of you, like the heart. You feel you're talking to that, but you're not. Innate is in your toenail and <laughs> in your hair. Innate is everywhere DNA is in any form that DNA exists. It's unique and it's you. Now I've told you that medical science has seen this, but they don't understand it. So let me give you the example. When a human being has the spinal cord severed in an accident, it is severed. We have talked about this before. Isn't it odd that it doesn't grow back? When everything else in the body is programmed to regenerate, the cells do not regenerate in a way where the nerves grow back. We have also told you there will be a a time when it does and that this is all part of the evolved human that is coming but let us talk about the way it is now let us see that you know or have seen a paraplegic a man or a woman in a chair who can move nothing but their head now does it make sense to you that all of the nerves are severed in the spinal cord and yet the things in the body that depend on the brain signals continue to work. The heart continues to beat, but you are told that the heart needs the brain to send the signals. You're told that the timing is in the brain for the signals to be in the right pattern. Digestion continues. Reproduction continues. Most of the body functions below the neck are uninterrupted and yet the brain is not sending signals anymore. How do you explain it? Medical science actually has a word for it. And the word would indicate that something takes over innately in the body. It's innate. <laughs> It is the DNA that keeps you alive. The DNA of this body actually connects with the brain and the signals are still sent in a quantum way. Remember, 
The DNA field is in connection with the full body all the time, even though the spinal cord is severed. The brain continues to send the signals. The DNA field receives them and sends them to the heart, to the digestive, everything but the muscles. I ask you to look at this, and you'll know that I am right. So you have proof of this innate the smart body will keep you alive even if the wires to the brain are severed. Innate is smart. It is why we call it the smart body. The innate is smarter than that which you will call the survival organ which is the brain. Innate is connected to something you should know about. Innate is connected to the higher self. Innate is connected to the Akashic record of the human being. Because in the DNA, those things are there. We gave you information so long ago about the layers of DNA. And now we're telling you that there is a cumulative DNA consciousness in its field called innate. It's time for you to think of your DNA as one thing, not trillions of things. Science does not even acknowledge that DNA can communicate with itself. And yet it has to, in order for you to work the way you work. The beauty of what we are teaching is this, is that the corporeal body the one that the brain controls is beginning to build a bridge to innate. And this bridge is going to be through intuition and will create eventually a time where you will be your own medical intuitive, where you will know not only what is going into your body and what is going on in your body, but also what's going on in your Akash. I have three things I want to describe to you today. None of them are a review. Not really. They're a revelation. I want to tell you what innate does. And I want to tell you that innate has programming. Innate is programmed for something you should know. Whereas the human brain is programmed for corporeal survival, innate is programmed for spiritual survival. You might ask, what is the mandate? What is the prime directive, if you want to use that terminology, for the human soul? Why are you here? <laughs> Your brain keeps you alive, dear ones. It helps you with everyday existence. It tries to keep you safe. It remembers what doesn't work day to day, corporally, but innate. I want you to think for a moment about what innate knows. Innate knows what the ancients knew. How long humanity had on this planet before it would have to make a decision. Innate knows that. Your DNA knows that. What is the prime directive of innate? To do everything it can for you to allow an awakening to take place, to allow humanity to go across the bridge and move into an ascended planet status. That is the prime directive. Spiritual survival, everything is designed around that. To push you forward in any way possible into spiritual awareness, that is what innate is for. In the process, innate also crosses the bridge with corporeal chemistry in very, very different ways. Innate is responsible for spontaneous remission. <laughs> you want to know where that comes from? How can you have a disease disappear overnight? 
How is it possible that the corporeal body can react and cleanse itself of something so unbalanced overnight? How can tissue grow at an accelerated rate to give healing overnight? I have just given you things that the hospitals have seen over and over. They have x-rayed them. There is no way, they would say. And yet, it is a miracle. No, it isn't. It's innate. That's the power that you have. When innate finally starts to build the bridge to the corporeal self, the human being as you know it will disappear. And the one that takes its place will have a long life, able to repair itself, even grow limbs back. That is how it was designed, dear ones. That should make sense to you. But let's talk about it today. Cryon Book One. All those years ago, I talked about something that innate is responsible for. I said, it's time to drop your karma. Where is karma stored? <laughs> it is a result of past life experience pulled forward through the veil into a reincarnate body. It is an energy of unfinished business. That's karma. It's in the DNA and innate governs it. And so, when we said it's time to drop your karma, how did we say to do it? You must talk to your body, talk to your cells, and say, I am done with the energy of the past, I drop the karma, I move forward. These were the first instructions you ever had from me about a process that crosses the bridge from the corporeal self to the innate. Pure intent. You address your body in a way that is so pure that the body sees it and acts. And that is how karma is dropped. Now I want you to see what was not stated. Would it make sense to you that as you come into an energy as an old soul where karma is no longer needed, wouldn't the smart body innate drop it by itself? And the answer is no. Now listen, because this is the teaching of the day. You see, innate, as smart as it is, is also programmed. And it's programmed in a survival for spiritual self. And karma has always played a part in that. You have got to deprogram innate. It has a bias. It's been doing this as long as you've been a human. It was designed to do certain things in a certain way. And consciousness is the key to change it. It always was. It always will be. Your free choice is needed to deprogram what I will call the instruction sets of an eight. So dropping your karma was the first instruction we ever gave you. Now there's more. And it gets more complicated. Innate is programmed to try to keep you into spiritual survival and there is an older system in innate that it still has and you've got to deprogram it. This reprogramming, you might say, through consciousness is not hard. Your consciousness through pure intent is king. You've always known you can change your chemistry, heal your body. Talking to innate is the key. How would you like to trigger your own spontaneous remission? Think about that. You can do it. 
This is the next step, dear ones. Talking to a cellular structure and controlling your chemistry is one thing. Controlling innate is another. It's you. You have permission. We told you some things in a channeling recently. We told you that affirmations are important. Now, affirmations are not repetitive phrases of meaningless consequence. And you know the difference. If you've memorized things that people told you to memorize, and mindlessly you repeat them over and over in order to accomplish a certain number of times, nobody is listening. <laughs> nobody. Because it is not seen as anything but verbose conversation with yourself. <laughs> That's it. Consciousness that is focused is pure intent. You mean it. Affirmations, especially the ones you create yourself out of your own consciousness, put to your body on a regular time schedule on purpose. You have an appointment with your innate and you're going to talk to it and here is the affirmation. And that is the way it works. You must talk to your innate as your best friend, as a human being sitting in front of you, and you're going to have a, a conversation. Would you, would you then just repeat things over and over to another person? And the answer is no. You'd give them the credibility of intelligence to listen. That is the credibility you must have with innate. Innate is your smart body. And it's time for you to reprogram what it thinks is your spiritual survival because innate has not crossed that marker with you. Your consciousness has crossed into this new energy and now it's time for you to reprogram everything. Recalibration, dear ones, is not automatic. Old soul, there are a few things you should know. Do you find it interesting that innate knows all about your past lives, but you don't? How is that for a system? <laughs> How would you like to know more? What is it that you have in your past lives that you could use today? We've talked about this. Mining the Akash is done through free choice of consciousness talking to your innate. Muscle testing, yes. Tapping, body talk, affirmations, whatever you can do that circumvents the corporeal logic of the human brain will work for innate. You have got to think different. You are used to quantity, repetition, loudness perhaps you're used to linear concepts to change things within you allopathic no homeopathy counts on innate to work did you know that a tincture sends a signal to the smart body to make the changes that the tincture has intent for that's the reason for homeopathy remedies. They're designed specifically to send a signal to an ape. Do they work? Oh, yes. You see, there's a whole concept of who you are that lurks in a place that we're asking you to connect to. If you connect to a Nate, you can start finding out about who you used to be. Innate will give you what you need to know because it's smart. You can ask innate who you were in a past life and it will not tell you if it is not important for your spiritual survival. <laughs> but it will give you karma to push you into areas that it thinks you need for spiritual survival. So let us talk about 
what you have to reprogram, which is the biggest issue of innate. Number one, drop your karma. <laughs> we say it again. That is number one. What is it that continues to push you around, dear ones, that is the, the Achilles heel of your personality? What is it that, that is there that you just don't understand why it's there? I'll tell you it's the energy of the past. Get rid of it. Innate will do what you tell it. If it sees that which is spiritual logic, and it will, because this channel innate is listening to along with you you are the consciousness trigger to change your own innate what is it that innate is built to do that makes no sense at all and I'm gonna tell you right now with everyone listening dear ones there is a system called reincarnation that is the engine at the moment for spiritual advancement on the planet you live a lifetime, you learn certain things, and you die. You are reborn into the planet, and in your DNA, Akash, or I'll say the well of wisdom, it is there. And it presses upon you, so you will not necessarily do the same thing again. An old soul knows better. In so many things that a new soul does not. You see newbies on the planet and they can't make heads or tails out of anything. You've been there and done that. Every single lifetime builds a library of wisdom. As you sit in the chair today, you know you're an old soul. You do. Now, here is what innate has learned the system requires. Are you ready? Death. <laughs> In order for you to graduate and pick up the wisdom and move forward into a higher spiritual consciousness, potentially in the next life, whether you do it or not, the potential only exists with death and rebirth. Are you starting to see where this is going? Innate, on purpose, will give you short lifetimes. <laughs> what a system! Suddenly, suddenly, you pass the marker. You come to a place where the Pleiadians knew you would be. You have the ability for the first time to do what we saw you could do 25 years ago when I came to this planet in my partner and wondered whether his stubbornness would ever allow a message like this. I want all of you to start telling innate that you don't need to die in order to capture the ideas that you are being given now of an advanced spiritual thought. That in the same lifetime that you live without death, you now have the ability of capturing wisdom and moving forward. You don't need to die. You don't need to reincarnate. You can do it by yourself. You have that in your DNA. It's starting to increase. By the time you get to 36, do the numerology. It's done. You now have the ability to stay. Innate doesn't know that. Thousands of years. It has been progressing your spiritual growth by short lifetimes. I hope I'm under. I'm, my partner is understanding this, giving you this in a way you can see. What if you didn't have to do this this way? And Nate needs to know it. Longer lifetimes are the key. Doesn't it make sense, dear ones, logically to you? that you can accomplish more on this planet if you don't have to be reborn and grow up all over again. Stay. Some of you carry around what we will call a near-death experience potential. 
Now, this is a time when perhaps the karmic part of you saw your death. The potential exists for a synchronicity that pushes you right into what innate things you need. <laughs> time for completion. Because you need to be reborn and get on with it because that's the only engine it has ever known for you to carry the wisdom over the veil. And now, as you start to touch the higher self, you can bring it into your current lifetime. You can have the aha experience. Some of you can be brought to your knees and come out with a completely different personality. And it's happened to those who are listening to this right now. Who were you 15 years ago? Or the same one? You think the same way, you do the same things. There are many on this earth who will say, yes, I'm the same person. Of course I am. That's the way I was born. Not you. Because you know you've changed your personality. You've changed your human nature. You've even changed your corporeal structure. There are those in here who have stopped aging. <laughs> That's what this is about. The key to stopping the aging process as you know it today is by communicating to the innate and saying you don't have to die to have a spiritual growth. And you can do that any way you want. Learn how to build affirmations that are positive. Get in touch with the body through whatever process starts to come your way where you can communicate, and you know you are, to that smart body. And let me tell you, you don't have to convince it. It knows it. As soon as it sees the progress that you have made in your consciousness, it's a done deal. Did you hear that? Innate knows who you are. It's the smart body. It wants to cooperate as soon as it sees a new avenue of spiritual evolution. You may live a lot longer than you want to. <laughs> so that's the next thing. Stay healthy while you, while you don't age. <laughs> Is it complicated? No. Is it filled with love? Yes. It's time you knew the truth. That you're in control of even time on this planet. That's how powerful you are. You're going to see it. And then you'll believe it. Not all of you are able to do it with the same, same strength. That's because each of you are individuals. Dear ones, I know who you are. The old souls of this planet awake. Awaken to the new processes of a new kind of life. And in the process, don't be afraid of what you see around you. Because there will be those who don't agree, who can't do it, who don't understand it. Sometimes the difference that you are will frighten them. Not forever. Because there will come a time when all humanity will know what I'm teaching tonight. And so it is.